Hi again, if you are a returning subscriber, um, I'd like to welcome you back to my YouTube channel again. And for those who are new to this channel, I'm Andrew Gomande and I make videos on the CAPS curriculum. And I'd like to welcome you to this channel. Right, so um, the last video, guys, we were doing, it was, of course, based on the financial documents part. Um, still doing financial maths. And um, it was... Um, specific on loan documents okay so we described we calculated we differentiated a lot uh, that we did there's a lot that we did there and now as i said guys uh, this is part two of this financial documents which is of course uh, focused on tax forms or taxation so let's carry on and um, start this section okay um, so again guys we'll begin with um, the concepts okay you need to understand the terminology that we use here um, and then we'll try to intertwine that with calculations okay I think um, that's effective that way okay so we'll start of course with again uh, the concepts des uh, describing them defining and differentiating between the different terms and then the calculations okay Right, so for the text forms, um, remember that everyone needs to pay tax, right? So as a worker or as an employee or as a business owner or as an entrepreneur, you have to pay tax, right? So you are uh, subjected to pay tax in South Africa. Now, of course, tax, um, of course, helps uh, government to achieve their goals. Um, on improving infrastructure, um, funding schools, building schools, healthcare uh, facilities. There's a lot more, guys. Okay, so um, it's basically the source of government. Okay, um, that the fact that they're able to do everything that they are able to do, maintaining the roads, so on and so on, is because of this tax. Okay, that is, um, of course, um, subtracted from the workers. Um, gross salary gross income okay so first of all i'll start with um i'll start with basically just um sort of explaining in basic terms what is actually happening and um, and then we'll get into uh, the content okay so now let's say you have just gotten employed okay so you have gotten employed in this particular job. So that means that you are an employee. Okay. So you are working uh, for pay. Okay. Now, when um, you are receiving money, now the company is going to pay you money, um, your salary, um, and it's going to give you, um, send that, of course, income to you. But you'd find that that income that is actually sending to you does not arrive um, all uh, to you. So it does not arrive as all of that income to you, okay? So some of that income is deducted, okay, through tax. Some of it is deducted through um, um, deductions, the, 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 the compulsory de de deductions that we will go through. And, um, of course, some of that, you have your trade unions, um, fees, you'll have um, all types of deductions that are made um, from that income that was sent, of course, by the company to you, okay? So, um, and actually, it's the company that is responsible to uh, deduct all of those fees from your salary, okay? So this is then what you take home, okay? You take home only this much, okay? So this is your take home pay, right? So in basic terms, guys, okay? So now let's talk uh, financial documents term or taxation terms. This whole income that you receive from this company, right? That whole income, all of that income, 
um, where they it is um, your travel allowances if your company does provide you with travel allowance um, maybe it's um, other allowances and of course your monthly salary um, so on and so on so all of that every amount every single cent that is going to come from the company all of that we call that gross salary okay so that's what we call it we call it the gross salary right so it's basically what the uh, the company um, gives to you um, for the value that you put in of course in the company okay so that's the, the gross salary right and then we are saying that there are deductions that are made before that money actually reaches your bank okay so the deductions uh, that we're talking about here um so these all of this okay make up the deductions okay so we're saying that these deductions um of course include they help you um when you are uh, when you are, are retired so so the government what they do is that they uh, save money for you while you are working so that when you are retired um, or resigning you will get um, the, the, um, the security money that of course you can use uh, to survive okay because you no longer have a job so they keep this money for you of course that um, it can be in the form of a pension fund okay so that is of course they, uh, they uh, deduct this money each and every month from uh, your income from your cross salary um, you have um, funds such as the UIF which is the unemployment um, insurance fund um, you have other deductions if you are part of a trade union they deduct that um, from your cross salary okay trade union fees um, if um, you are um, sending um, donations to a part to part particular non-profit organizations those are your charities so they are not going to tax that so all of this is non um, tax does not apply to this okay so all these deductions guys um, tax um, does not apply there so these are these actually are deducted before your tax is actually deducted so first thing that we deduct are the, uh, the tax deductible um deductions but we will um of course uh, get into that so saying that this is the first step okay um actually the first step is company sending you um um your gross salary okay or your monthly salary so, so on and so on okay so they will be specific in the questions they can say the gross monthly salary or they can say the gross annual salary so um, it really depends so that's the first thing and then it this amount all of this is deducted okay um for of course security reasons just in, so the un, uh, the unemployment insurance fund it will be deducted um usually one percent of your gross salary will be deducted every month um so so that when you are maybe um, it happens that you are let go from that uh, job and you no longer have work and you can claim back that UIF, okay? Um, and then what remains, guys? What remains? Still not your take home. You, you do not take this home. This does not get into your bank account. The fraction that remains, um, we we then uh, use this uh, this income or this fraction of your gross salary that is left after deductions, which we call the taxable amount, uh, the taxable income. So this income is the income that we're going to use to actually calculate how much tax can we um, get or, or, or deduct from you. Okay. So this is uh, this is when we actually um, deduct tax from this from whatever is left after these deductions. I hope you guys are with me on that one. Okay. So of course, taxable um, the taxable income is different um, from employee to employee, and the more you earn, guys, the higher the tax. Okay, so that's how it works. Um, you find out that 
for an example, soccer players, they have huge gross salaries, like millions, but you'd find that um, their take home a pay is actually less, very, very less than that, okay? So um, it is based on what we call a sliding scale. So uh, we will take a look at these guys. I'm just trying to give you the idea of what actually happens, okay? So um, after this, so after we deduct um, this, uh, this text, okay? So I'm just going to um, subtract another fraction here. Okay, so this fraction is the tax that that is uh, deducted from your taxable income. Remember, this is your taxable income. That is the income after deductions, okay, which is subtracted from the gross salary. Now we have deducted the income, uh, the the tax. I mean the income tax, and then whatever that is left. Okay, so in this case, uh, this is what is left. Okay, so this is what actually gets into your bank okay this is what you take home eventually okay so now this is your what we call the net pay okay this is what um will uh, be sent to your bank okay which is the net pay or the net salary or the take home pay so on and so on so this is how it works now um, there are other terms that we haven't explored yet. Um, we'll also um, explore this further again. As I was saying, guys, I'm just um, giving you the idea of how this actually works. And so let's um, get into it then. Okay. Now, guys, um, if you are actually working, you, I'm sure you are aware of this. Um, there's what we call an income tax form. Now, an income tax form is actually identical to an IRP5, okay? So, what this contains, it actually is a, is a form that contains information that is used to calculate taxes on all income and profits received by the taxpayer. Remember, the taxpayer can be the employee, okay? The taxpayer, the taxpayer uh, can be, uh, of course, the employer, okay? The one who are, who hires uh, workers and pays them. Okay, so um, it really applies on both whether you are investing, whether you invest, or whether you are a business owner, whether you are working for someone, or whether you divorce, so on and so on. So um, everyone pays tax. So uh, we then use this information. All of this, uh, of course, it contains information on uh, the income that you are given. Uh, that is sent from the company each and every day or what you get as a business owner, how much you make from the sales uh, or whatsoever that you are selling or the rental income if you are a property investor. And so it basically contains all, um, all the information uh, that is then used to calculate the taxes okay, on everything that you receive. And then, um, of course, the taxable income, uh, guys, um, is the income that um, we use to calculate tax. Okay, so remember, as I use this um, example here, you first get the gross salary, okay, which is, of course, all of the income that you have received, every cent from the, uh, the company that you have received, and of course, we subtract the deductions. So after deductions, then you have um, that. Um, that taxable. Um, sorry about that. That taxable income. So this is the taxable income I'm talking about. This is, um, of course, gross salary subtract the deductions, and then you get taxable income. So it's basically um, an income we use um, to calculate, or you can say it's an income after deduction that we use to calculate the income tax your your income tax okay um this shouldn't be here let me just delete that or maybe let's just cut that so about this let's cut this okay so that is what your uh taxable income is it's what we is the income that we use to calculate um your income tax okay 
and then the R uh, the IRP file form that is um, a document or we can also call it a certificate that the employer gives gives it to you as an employee okay so document issued by the employer to the employee okay so employers are actually um, um, it's, it's by law that um, that they always give this to you in this for each and every year right so you find out at the end of a particular tax year um, employers give their employees um, this IRP5 form and of course it has basically all the tax information all the income that you've received from the employer all the deductions that the employer has deducted from you um, everything is basically proof of um, of what you you you, you um, you need to pay or you have paid uh, or maybe you should have paid um, so on tax okay so saying that this contains tax information that the employer deducted from the employees earnings in the previous tax year okay so at the end of each tax year you receive an, R, an IRP file uh, which contains all of this information okay so uh, that is what an IRP file is we will also look at let me actually show you guys okay um I, I think i did have yes there we go so this is an example of an irp5 so you'd find that it has all of the information concerning the income that you've been receiving from uh your employer um during the past tax year okay um so this is still the income received and then these are tax credits or uh, the, the contributions, the deductions. Um, of course, the pay as you earn, guys, uh, which is also shortened as payee. The pay as you earn is basically income tax. It's nothing much. It's what you actually uh, pay as tax as your um, as, as an employee. Okay, so and um, of course other deductions, medical uh, schemes, so on and so on. So so it basically shows all of um the in your income the deductions everything that you should have paid and um so it's basically proof um that actually uh, is uh, submitted every um text every end um of the particular text here okay so um let's move on let's move on then now let's talk about this again okay let's talk about the terminology again so we are saying that uh, gross salary is the total, okay? Gross, guys, gross means total, okay? So gross salary in this case, that means it's the total amount and um, it could be in a month, it could be in a year. Again, um, I should have just um, done that. So it could be um, in a month or in a year, remember, they have to specify it um, to you okay they usually do right so it's uh, that total amount total income that you receive uh, this includes all types of salary now this is for uh, the employees okay so people who are actually uh, employees who are working of course putting in value in these particular companies for um, of course in exchange of salary then this refers to them. So, of course, you are going to receive salary and over time, you know, your bonuses, so on and so on. So, the gross salary, that is um, all of these income, all types of income you receive from that particular company that added together is your gross salary as an employee. And then you have what we call a gross income, okay? A salary and an income, guys, is not the same, okay? So for an income, um, it usually refers to um, most of the time people who actually um, are investors. Okay, so let's say you have a particular um, a particular um, property, and you've actually put in people there um, as tenants. So what do you get in exchange? Of course, you are getting rental income okay so that rental income of course has to be recorded it has and um, to have tax 
subjected from it okay so um so we're going to subtract text there so on and so on but um for particularly for the people who are actually um investing in um property uh people who are have businesses so on and so on your employers uh people who you know get royalties okay other types of income okay except for of course for um people who are actually employ in, are employees okay so there's the difference there of course as you can see the salary um is um usually referring to people who are employed um of course who are employees and um of course we get these types of incomes which is the salary over time bonuses and then for the gross income this is of course um it includes all forms of income not restricted to um the employee um sort of um environment like that okay because people there's different ways to earn money guys you can invest in shares um capital gain there's different types okay so you could be working for a particular uh um business while you are investing in other uh types of of course um business enterprises okay right and then um we have what we call deductions okay remember deductions right so deductions of course these um are the first um first fees of funds that are deducted from your cross salary okay so so we also call them tax deductible deductions okay uh, so these are amounts that need to be subtracted from the cross salary before money is deposited into the employee's bank account even before it is deposited into the employee's bank account there has to be tax that is uh, going to be deducted or subtracted from whatever that remains um after these deductions okay just as what of uh just as um, how i've uh, illustrated that okay the gross salary subtract these um deductions and then whatever is left is used to calculate the tax and then subtract tax and then whatever is left is your um take home pay on that salary so um these uh, include as i said the uif uif is an unemployment insurance fund okay you can get let go or fired from a particular job and you end up not having a job guys it can happen for a year and so you can um go back there and ask for a claim for your uif um which of course is always which was always being deducted from your gross salary it's usually one percent of your gross salary okay and then you have your pension okay these are of course for people that are uh, pensioning maybe you have uh, been working there for years and years and years so you receive a pension fund of course it is also part of the deductions uh, that were made whenever um you got paid uh for trade union fees so for those uh people who have memberships in trade unions um who which actually uh are organizations which fight for the rights of workers um and then of course your loan repayments so if you have a loan it will actually um be paid um before you actually have your your your, your net uh salary okay so your loan repayments so on and so on so it's, these are the deductions that are made before uh tax guys before tax okay and so after deductions what are you left with again you're left with the taxable income this is the income that is remaining after we have deducted of course these deductions so this income is then used to calculate what tax okay this income is what we call taxable income okay now these are the other terminologies so um income tax this is a tax on all sources of income of course your salary interest income uh, rental income so on and so on okay and um it is calculated on the taxable income okay you cannot just take uh the whole uh, cross salary and calculate tax on that you have to first make deductions these deductions even in your exams if you are given 
uh, deductions first calculate them um, in order to calculate the tax okay calculate them the deductions and um, if you are given of course deduct them from the gross salary and the remaining amount will be a taxable income which are, you are going to use to calculate the income tax okay right it can be very confusing but i, I will be doing a lot of activities um, today so you don't have to worry about anything okay and then of course taxable income this is its uh, formula of course is the gross salary or the gross income subtract um, the tax deductible deductions your uif your um, pension funds and guys if you're not given these uh, deductions you don't have to use anything okay um, so you only use this formula when you are given deductions in order to calculate the taxable income uh, but because sometimes they just give you the taxable income as like that okay so that means that they've already deducted they've already made deductions from the gross income okay so they've already um calculated excuse me this um using this formula okay so this is the formula to calculate the taxable income and then of course from the taxable income you use tax tables and um rebates so on and so on which we'll explore use those to calculate the actual tax okay and then if they want the net uh, salary you can subtract these income tax that you've calculated um, from the taxable income okay so we are saying that after you have calculated the taxable income guys okay um, um, you are going to use those tables okay we will look at those tables to calculate the tax income tax after you've calculated the income tax you will use um so let's say if you want the net salary okay uh you try to you're trying to figure out how much this person gets paid actually how much do they um have uh paid into their accounts into their bank accounts and so you will take gross salary okay actually not gross salary uh but rather you will um take the the taxable income okay subtract income tax okay in that way you are going to get um that net salary right okay um and then again, yes, these are the tax deductible deductions, guys. So these, of course, are specific deductions that are sub, uh, subtracted from gross income before tax is calculated. Okay. So these are some of these. Some of them are, I'm sure you are aware of them, like the pension fund, the retirement annuity fund. This is usually uh, for people who are working in the private industry. They don't have um, pension. They don't have government taking or subtracting money from their gross salary they actually have to use a third party um, that will keep on subtracting this amount of money uh, that particular um, uh, fraction of money that they want to be uh, that they want subtracted from their gross salary okay so this is usually for the private uh, industry and you can choose uh, for the retirement annuity fund you can actually choose how much you want to be deducted but for the uh, the, the the pension fund is actually calculated and um, it's set like that okay and um, so on and so on okay donations okay right now let's take a look um, at how we actually calculate uh, let's take a look at actually at text tables okay and some other terminology and then we'll um, get into how we calculate income tax take home pay um, so on and so on right so each and every year um, SARS uh, releases a, a table that we call a tax table okay now this is a chart that displays the amount of tax uh, due based on income received okay as I said, guys, the more income you receive, the more tax uh, will be due. Okay? Um, the tax rate in the table 
may be shown as a discrete amount, a percentage rate, or a combination of both. Now, discrete amount, um, a discrete, so when, when we're talking about discrete data, uh, for an example, um, so you have, um, when it's discrete, discrete data, I mean, so it's like whole numbers. You're talking about whole numbers, maybe 2,500. Um, sorry about that. And then when you are referring to uh, continuous um, values or continuous amount, um, you're talking about maybe 2,573. Okay, so that is the continuous amount and the discrete amount. Okay, just say. Um, the text tables are used by individuals, companies, and estates uh, for both standard income and capital gain. Okay, so for an example, when you are selling, uh, maybe you've bought a house. Okay, you've bought a house, and um, you fix it. Okay, fix it. Make sure that it's in good condition, and you sell it. Okay, and so the profit there, there will be. Uh, so from the profit. There will be a tax which we call a capital gain tax that will be deducted. So it's basically a type of tax uh, that is um, uh, deducted, okay, um, in particular situation. So let's take a look at this tax table here. Yeah? Um, so this is what we call the tax table, guys. Okay, let me use a clicker line so as and it will be written um which year this applies to so in this case this applies to the years 2023 to 2024 okay now on the uh, left hand side so you have two columns you have the taxable income and then you have the rates of tax okay um so on the left hand side the taxable income uh, so it means that if you receive this amount of taxable income um, so in this case let's say and by the way there are these rows are what we call brackets for an example this is bracket one okay and this is the second bracket this is bracket two okay so on bracket three bracket four bracket five bracket six and bracket seven okay so sometimes they do ask you um, which bracket a particular taxable income falls into because of course this is a range guys this is uh, the minimum amount in this particular bracket and that's the maximum amount there okay and then this is the minimum amount here in the third bracket and that's the maximum amount there so um, that's how it works okay these are brackets okay so these are those are simple questions that they can ask you and um, on the right hand side, which is the right column, you have rates of tax. Okay, now we use these as formulas to calculate um, tax or income tax. Um, so um, we will look at activities here, guys. I will show you how we use these, but these are actually um, formulas, okay, that we use. Right. Now let's go back to our notes. Um, so because um, as um, people, as you are growing up, guys, as you become older and older, you have more responsibilities. And so government um, came up with um, a relief. So this is sort of like um, um, a discount. Okay. So this is a tax discount. Okay. So that government provides um to people who are working as you grow older and older getting to your getting into your 50s 60s 70s this tax discount actually increases so you get more discount so that means that you pay less tax so it actually uh reduces the tax that you pay okay so that's what we're saying here that we call tax rebates okay so these are tax discounts that you get um, of course, based on your income and expenses and your age as well. Um, so, so SARS, which is of course 
um, the, 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 the institution that collects this tax uh, will calculate the amount of tax that you owe to them and based on your income and expenses throughout the year, if certain conditions apply, they will reduce the amount due. Okay, so they will reduce the amount of income that you actually pay. Okay, um, so the rebate applied by SARS is according to age. As I said, guys, as you grow older, the rebate or the, this discount actually increases. That means it further decreases your tax. So we have three levels actually. We have the primary level, the secondary level, and the tertiary level or tertiary rebate. Primary rebate is for under uh, is for people that are under 65 years. So if you like in your, you are in your 40s or 50s, you actually fall or qualify only for this particular rebate, which is um, and it's always provided in years, guys. Like um, this is there's only going to be 1,420 deducted from your income tax each and every year. Okay, only this much that is deducted, which is a relief. Um, and then um, if you are actually between 65 and 75, you actually qualify not only for this secondary um, tax rebate, but you qualify for both primary and secondary. That's how it works. Okay, so that means that if you are let's say 66 or 68, that means you fall here in this level. That means you will qualify for both the primary and the secondary, meaning which. Uh, this amount plus this amount will actually uh, be deducted from your income tax and so that's easier relief so that means that it increases so that means that it's more than um, it's um, actually uh, more than um, 8,000 okay that is uh, that you are relieved off okay because you qualify for both of these so we, um, I've added 1.4 and this 7.7 .7, okay to get that 8,000 and of course with um, rents there and then if you are um, let's say 80 years then you qualify for all of these and so they will add all of these and they will deduct them from the income that means you actually uh, pay less tax the more you grow remember um, the more you grow older there are more taxes you get sick there's medical expenses medical bills you have grandchildren you have there's a lot, okay. So um, there's a lot of expenses, and hence uh, more and more relief as you grow older. Now another second type of relief is the medical credits, okay. Um, so this is basically another type of uh, discount, and uh, that of course the taxpayer can use to reduce his or her tax pay uh, or his or her income tax payable, okay. And so uh, medical credit is a fixed amount that increases depending on the number of dependencies, okay? So let's take a look at these medical credits. So if, for an example, um, you, which is the principal member, um, and you, they are usually provided um, as annual amounts, but of course in this example it's provided as um, as a monthly amount okay so if it's you okay you in for your medical aid you're covering you and maybe um, your child so that's two of you so that means that you have one um, dependent so that's you and your child and so that would um, I mean the first dependent, so if it's you and your partner, let's say this is your partner, and um, of course you guys have a child, so that is the principal member, okay, and then the first dependent, which is um, your partner, so this is the first dependent, um, and then the child of course will, will be an additional dependent, okay, so that means that you guys actually um, qualify for that amount, okay? The amount of uh, tax credits. Um, so you're going to add all of those, and um, usually um, when we calculate the tax and subtract these tax rebates from this tax that we've calculated, um, we usually calculate these 
um, as annual values, okay? So you'd have to first uh, multiply these by 12 and then add them all together and of course uh, look at which tax rebates this person qualifies for and then subtract these. Remember these are uh, your tax relief. These are your discounts guys. So that means that after you've calculated your income tax, you have to subtract all of these, okay? Of course, depending on the individual and their family, right? Now, I've been talking a lot now. I think it's time for us to actually work. Let's do an activity, guys. Um, so I'll start with um, I'll start with this question. I think. Yeah, I'll start with this question. Um, and then I'll do the IRP five question. Because um, income tax, a lot of people really struggle with income tax. So let's take a look at um, how you calculate income tax. I'll just just five steps. Okay. So your income tax, how you do it? The first step is that you calculate uh, the gross income. Okay. If you are um, given maybe gross income, but you are given monthly. Okay. So if you are given monthly gross income. Then you have to, um, okay, but it should be gross income, monthly gross income. Then you should have, uh, you should multiply that by 12. Ensure that it is annual, okay. Ensure that it is an annual um, gross income, okay. And then the second step is that you have to subtract tax deductible deductions from that gross um, annual income. Okay, that means you have to subtract your deduction. So if you are given, maybe this person has a particular UIF, and they will tell you how much that is per year. Okay, uh, maybe they are also paying a pension fund, and for a particular, it's, it, this is this amount. So these you will have to um, subtract from the gross annual income. Okay, um, and then from so again, guys, we are saying that. You, have, you start with your gross, make sure that you have um, your gross annual income, okay? And then you subtract from this gross annual income, you subtract deductions, okay? And then what do you end up with after you subtract deductions? You end up with a taxable income. This is a taxable income, the word suggests that means that this is the this is the income that it will be subjected to tax. Okay, and then when you have um, calculated your taxable income, you use the tax table. Okay, use tax rate in the tax table, meaning which uh, you first have to figure out which um, bracket does this person fall in. Okay, as I've shown you the tax table, and then you use the formula on the of course right hand. Um, the right hand, the right hand, um, of course, column. Okay, so you use these formulas. Okay, if you uh, if you realize that this person actually falls in the third bracket, okay, then you will use this formula. Okay, in order to calculate the income tax. Now, after you've used that formula to calculate the income tax. Um, you are going to then subtract, of course, the discounts, guys, uh, which are your tax rebates and the medical tax. Subtract those from the income tax that you have used, uh, that you have calculated. Remember, the taxable income, you use tax table. You take the taxable income and use the tax table. And the taxable income should be an annual amount, guys. Okay, That's why I'm saying that. Um, if you've calculated the gross annual income already, then you don't have to worry about anything. Okay, so use the tax table in order to calculate the income tax. After you've calculated the income tax, then um, you have to subtract the rebates. Okay, subtract the rebates. In this case, it uh, the tax rebate, of course, will always be there, and then subtract also the medical 
credits. Okay, so these uh, the medical credit sometimes um, you are not provided with, so you don't have to worry about it sometimes. Uh, but when you're practicing, guys, ensure that you um, choose questions that have both of these types of um, rebates. Okay, so after you've subtracted these, then you will have the annual income that you actually pay. Right? Okay, it's the annual income tax. Right, now let's uh, stop talking and get on to it then. We don't have time. We don't have time. Um, so we said that, said that I'm going to uh, start with this question. So let's head on and um, look at this uh, question then. Okay. Um, so this is question four. Um, 2023 preparatory exams. So let's um, look at a question. Let's do activities, guys. Okay, so what do we have here? So this is 4.1, and uh, it reads uh, Mr. Parker, aged 44, earns a monthly basic salary of 74,000 rands 800. Okay, so a monthly basic salary, guys, um, of course, is our monthly gross salary. Okay, um, unless they tell you net salary, guys, or yes, net salary or taxable um, income. A monthly basic salary is a monthly gross salary. It's basically um, the income that includes, of course, all the deductions that still have to be deducted. So it's basically um, the income that is actually paid from um, the particular company to, um, to, to, to you. Okay? So that is your monthly gross salaries, the total with the, before the deductions. That's what I mean. Um, he has a medical aid. Okay, so that means he qualifies, of course, for um, the medical tax credits that covers um, himself, his wife, and their three children. Okay, okay. The following deductions are made from his salary. So you have the pay as you earn, the pay. So that is the income tax, guys. Okay, of course, income tax will be made. And um, there's UIF, okay, the Unemployment Insurance Fund, which is usually 1%. And um, medical aid, all right. He had, basically means that he qualifies for the medical tax uh, relief. And then um, he also pays, um, pension fund is also deducted from that gross income. And he also donates 5000 to an orphanage. So... That is charity, so that is also a deduction. So uh, these are all, of course, deductions before uh, these three are deductions before we actually um, calculate the we actually get the taxable income. Okay, so that means that uh, this guy will have his um, gross salary, and then we will subtract. Um, the UIF we will subtract the pension fund and we will subtract um, the donations okay such that whatever whatever is left we use that as taxable income to calculate um, the income tax that he's supposed to pay so these uh, three um, are our donations so those are the donations on the left hand side okay so we have to first subtract them from this whole gross salary okay all right um, and then they say um, UIF deduction for persons earning taxable income that is 17,712 or more the month 
okay so that means uh, for people who are actually um, earning a taxable income that is 17,712 or more per month okay so for the, the, the UIF deductions for these people is 1% of 17,712 or uh, 177, uh, 12 cents a month. Mm. <coughs> <coughs> yes, maths lead can be quite confusing. I know that. So we're saying that this applies for people who are actually earning the taxable income that is this amount or more per month. Uh, this is how we calculate there. UIF deduction, okay? So it's 1% of this, or it's actually 177,12 per month. So it's either it's 1% this, 177.12 per month is actually 1% of the 17,778, right? So maybe they shouldn't have written that. It's quite confusing. Okay, so saying that, okay, all right, so if you are earning a taxable income is more than that, then um, the UIF should be 170, uh, 12 cents per month. Okay, and then of course we have our income tax table, our tax rebate, and of course the medical tax credit because the guy has medical aid. All right, um, so 4.1.1 says write down write down okay so whenever they say write down that means that you don't actually have to calculate anything you can just write down the amount that is deducted every month for uif okay that is deducted every month for uif well we were told guys that um this is of course for persons earning a taxable income and um, that is seventeen thousand seven hundred and twelve or more per month is one percent of this or 177 comma 12 per month so this is our answer right here okay it's the 177.12 uh, per month okay we're given that okay so it really also comes down to um, your analysis guys like how do you read uh, questions how do you analyze them so that's what you have to be careful with um, should be your formula number one, right? Should be careful with Matt's lead. It can be very tricky. I'm telling you guys, it can be very tricky. When it comes to words, um, they can trick you, right? So let's move on to 4.9.2. Uh, calculate Mr. Parker's annual pension fund deduction. Annual pension fund deduction, okay. So what did we told about the uh, deduction? We were told that it, uh, pension fund is 7.5% of basic salary. Um, so I think this should be because we are looking for an annual pension fund deduction. So um, we should be first um, calculating the annual basic salary and then take 7.5 of that. Um, basic salary right so I think that's what we should be doing um, so or we can do it like this guys I think it's better this way where we actually just take 7.5 percent of the monthly basic salary and then multiply that all together okay so we are taking um, 7.5 so 7.5 uh, percent so percent as I always say as guys as I always say you just divide that by 100 whatever digit that is so we're taking 7.5 percent of this monthly salary which is which is 74,800 okay of course by doing this we haven't calculated the annual um, the annual pension fund so we are still calculating the monthly basic um, pension fund I mean the monthly pension fund yes 
So you take um, seven comma five uh, percent, uh, which should be zero comma zero seven five, right? So zero point zero seven five multiplied by seventy four thousand eight hundred. So that should be uh, five thousand. Uh, 610 and then take this and multiply it by 12. Okay, remember we want the annual uh, pension fund. This is still the monthly basic fund. Okay, take that answer, multiply that by 12 and we should get an answer of 67,320. Right. Okay, I hope you got this. So that is the monthly uh, what I first calculated, I calculated the monthly um, uh, pension fund and then multiplied that answer by 12, okay, to get the annual uh, basic, um, I mean, pension fund. 4.9.3, head on, let's move on. <clears throat> 4.9.3 says, Mr. Parker's pension fund and donation, which are the, 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 the deductions, and donation contributions are allowable tax deductions, yes? Calculate his annual taxable income. His annual taxable income. Okay, and then they say you may use the formula monthly taxable income is equal to basic salary, subtract pension fund, subtract donation. The donation, is it monthly? Needs, uh, yeah, it should be monthly. This all should be monthly, guys. Okay, these all should be monthly because we're talking about a monthly basic salary. So, um, okay, so I guess we'll have to use this formula to first calculate the monthly uh, taxable income and then multiply that, of course, by 12 in order to get the annual taxable income. Okay, so that's why we're gonna uh, we're gonna do. So let's first um, calculate the monthly taxable income. Okay. So start with uh, the monthly taxable income. You know, monthly can be really um, can be really tough sometimes. Okay. So the monthly taxable income. Saying that is equal to the basic salary, so we are taking the monthly basic salary. Okay, everything should be monthly because we are calculating the monthly taxable income. So we're taking 74,800 and then we're subtracting what the pension fund. Do we have a monthly pension fund? <clears throat> yes, we do, guys. There we go. That's our monthly because uh, in the previous question, we first calculated the monthly pension fund. And then multiply it by 12. So it makes it easy for us. So monthly um, pension fund is 5,610. And then we subtract um, the donation, which is 5,000, right? Donates 5,000 to an orphanage, right? Then, so that means that our monthly taxable income put that into a calculator 74,800 uh, subtract the 5,610 subtract 5,000 okay so that should give us a monthly taxable income of <coughs> of um, 64,990 Right, yeah, that should be it. Okay. All right. Okay. So I guess the UIF is not an allowable, in this case, not an allowable tax deduction because I guess he earns quite a lot. Okay, I'm not sure about that. Let's move on to the next question 4.9.4. Says, um, calculate Mr. Parker's annual medical 
tax credit, annual medical tax credit, and they've actually provided with us with month uh, monthly term medical tax credit. Okay, so that's why it's three months, I guess. So let's read again. Um, who is involved? Who is included? Who is covered in the medical aid? So it's him, his wife, and their three children. Okay, so him and his wife. So him qualifies. So he qualifies as a principal member. His wife qualifies as a first dependent, and each children they qualify as an additional dependent. So this means that <clears throat> uh, we are going to um, so because they uh, want us to calculate an annual, so we'll just put twelve outside like that. So we basically going to so for. The principal member, which is him and his wife, this is the same amount, so you can just multiply these by 2. Okay, you can just say 364 times 2. Okay, let me actually write it here, guys. I don't want to waste any time, so <clears throat> we're saying that it's going to be 12, and then we open brackets. Um, we are going to say 2 multiplied by. 364 so this accounts for um, um, him and his wife and then let's account for the children the children there's three of the children and each uh, additional dependent is 20 um, should pay and uh, should be 246 so that's three times 246 okay and close the bracket. So we'll first calculate, of course, um, everything that is inside, and then later on multiply that by 12. Okay. So say two times um, 364, and that's 728, and then add. Three times um, 246, and that is 738. And then close the brackets. Add those two. So you always, guys, you always have to start uh, with whatever that is inside the bracket. So inside the bracket, we have 728 plus 738. So that's 1,410. Uh, 66 and then that then we multiply that with 12 by 12 and then that means that each year yes there's 17,592 medical tax credit okay so that is 4.1.4 okay that should be it yeah that should be it so please be careful when you're calculating the medical tax credit sometimes you can you can make silly mistakes here and there and then 4.9.5 <coughs> oh in seven months mm. says mr parker claims that if he had no medical okay so if he had no medical um he would be paying 1,466 more on a monthly basis to SARS. So that would be that. That actually means that he sh he would be paying more tax. Okay, to SARS. Okay. All right. So verify showing all the calculations if his claim is valid. Um, these types of questions, guys, these are the types of questions where you have to carry out two um, calculations and then find the difference between them. So we have to first calculate um, the amount of tax um, that he would be paying if, of course, he had um, this um, medical tax credit included and then calculate separately the amount of tax that he would be uh, paying if he had no medical tax credit so and then 
subtract that, subtract that and see if it's uh, more than that. Okay. Right, so let's head on then. So again, guys, we're calculating income tax. And so that means that we should be um, looking at, first looking at our taxable income. So we already calculated the annual taxable income in 4.1.3, uh, right? And we found it. Monthly tax. Oh, guys, I made a mistake there, right? Oh, man. Yeah, I made a mistake there. Wow, okay. So we should have just multiplied this by 12, okay? Because that's a monthly um, taxable income, okay? That's, I'm sorry about that. So saying that 64,190 multiplied that by 12. So that should the answer there. So we should, we would not have gotten, of course, the maximum marks there if we left it like that. Okay, I'm sorry about that again. So that means that uh, his taxable annual taxable income is seven hundred seven hundred and seventy thousand two hundred and eight, and which bracket does he qualify for there? 770 so it should be this one so one two three four five so it qualifies for the fifth bracket and so this means that we're going to use this formula in order to calculate his income tax okay so we're using this formula this is how you use this formula right so it's 179,000 um, hundred and forty-seven friends. Um, and then plus thirty-nine percent. Okay, so thirty-nine percent can also write it as zero point three nine. Okay, of the amount above six hundred and seventy-three thousand. So when they say of 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 means multiply, guys, right? So multiply this of the amount the amount is of course the taxable income uh, taxable income that we have above this much that means they are looking for the difference between that 770 thousand and this 673 thousand okay so remember this 673 thousand is the minimum and of course this is what we have and so we have to just subtract those two inside that bracket. So we'll have um, 770,280 yens. Subtract um, the minimum, which is the 673,000 yens. So this is how you should carry out these. Um, and don't rush. Please don't rush. And what do we do? We start always start with the brackets, guys. What must, right? Always start with the bracket. So let's look at the difference between 770,280 minus um, 673,000. And the difference is actually uh, 97,208. Okay. Then the next thing that we're going to do going to multiply our answer here by 0 0.39 okay we'll add later on okay um, so I'm just going to carry out uh, this answer of course this hundred and seventy nine thousand one forty seven okay and out the space okay so next thing uh, we're going to multiply those two together first. So the 0 0.39. So our answer, we just multiply our answer with 0 0.39, which gives us an amount of 37,939. Uh, 
comma two. Then of course we are adding that with our hundred and seventy nine thousand one hundred and forty seven rents. Okay, so we're just adding the, up those two, and then we should get our income tax. Okay, so remember this is okay. So our income tax. So we just add. We'll add. 179,147 to this, and so our income tax should be uh, 217,086 rents point okay, to uh, 20 cents. And then, um, so this is our income tax, and um, this is, of course. The annual income tax, right? Okay. So when uh, because we were looking for the monthly, right? We'd be paying more on a monthly basis. So that means that we'll um, have to divide this by twelve in order to calculate the um, the instance where he has no medical credits to. Um, to pay, so <clears throat> we'll just divide this and uh, divide this by 12. Okay, and we'll say with without okay, medical credits. Okay, because we're not going to subtract medical credits now. We'll subtract it for our second scenario. So that we are divide that by twelve. So divide this by twelve. So we are without medical credits, he would be paying eighteen thousand rands and ninety. So eighteen thousand and ninety rands. Point five one um, six seven. Okay, without medical credits and then with medical credits then um, what would he be paying okay um, that means that we're going to actually subtract these medical uh, credits um, because we already have <coughs> the monthly income tax so we can write that down and then subtract the monthly uh, medical credit. So 18,000 and 92 rands, 5167, and then subtract um, monthly medical credits. I think we did calculate the monthly. The monthly medical credits um, should be that, right? So in our previous um, question, we were calculating the annual medical credits, which were that. And so the monthly should be that. So it should be 1,466. So remember, this is a discount, guys. Okay. So that's why we are subtracting it from the income tax. And so subtract 1,466. And so he would be, because he had medical aid. He has a discount, and so now he would instead be paying sixteen thousand six hundred and twenty-four uh, rents, of course, from a five one six seven. Right now, let's look at the difference. Then, so to calculate the difference, going to say um, without medical credits and with medical credits, and uh, we'll see how much. Um, he would have paid, we have paid um, more than 1,466, which was written there, or not. So, um, let's say 18,000 and 90 friends, 0.5167, and then subtract 16,000. Uh, 624 cross 0.5167 
then the answer um, okay this subtract and then ninety five one seven boom that's one thousand uh, four hundred and sixty six so he would have been um, okay so the question was Mr. Powell claims that if he had no medical he would be paying 1466 more on a monthly basis then that means that his um, his calculations are actually valid because now because now he has no medical credit is actually paying more but how much more is actually paying uh, 1466 more so that is um, we have to write down the um, that his claim is valid okay that's another monster his claim is valid I hope you guys are with me here it's, this has been a long long activity here okay so that should be it um, now for more activities guys I'm actually um, going to I think I'm going to have to maybe do another video or should we should we continue on just thinking of the time now I'm actually I'm um, going to um, make another video on taxation so we'll have a, let's rather have a part two on this because we did not actually um test out our objectives um if they were met uh, not all of them remember we still have to do an activity with the i uh, the irp5 um still have to do an activity of course um uh, maybe a simpler activity because that, that was a pretty difficult activity for our first time so um yeah my choice of activities really so we'll um i'll see you guys in the in the next video and yes there will be part three of this um, so again guys if you um you need um more or rather let's say if you want to access our previous videos i'll leave a link in the description and also it should be a, it should appear on our on your right hand side okay on the, on the top hand uh on the top right right so i uh, thank you again for uh, viewing this and um, we'll see you on the next video